when you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipe books. Recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. Jesus. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this stuff. Oh. Why don't you make it like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try to cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Chickadee crickets. Oh, it's time for class, and if you're distracting the rest of us who wants to learn. Oh, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. <gasps> oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. Ooh. I'm not sure you know how to be a, uh, know a good meal if it ate you. That sounds sexy. Being the best chef in the world makes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what they're hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I didn't know the, what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. Then it turned into a book. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. <laughs> He's like, I'm in danger, kid. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clink must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ugh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Womp. Look, he's all pissed off. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. <laughs> no, your mother was a mixer, uh, stand mixer. Whirl. Van Van jumps to attack Clank. But Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Oh. Oh. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazy men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me. But I'm not interested in either of them. Fucking psycho look. She look, does look it, nice. it's, it's... Yeah, this is sounding just as kind of familiar. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got softly... I've got lawfully career aspirations to focus on. Kind of fool himself. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives, 
to signal the true start of class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. <laughs> students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town with my tiny legs are very, very tired. <laughs> but I'm here now and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. Quack. You want to pay attention to his lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken that first signed their name. said that I got that. <clears throat> but you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss most, the, most of the important parts. When you come to Sprinkles, when you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Big Daddy Grizz, naturally, it appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Grab the glass of water and gulp it down. It's cool and crisp, like the purest snow melted by a mountain spring. Hey, that was mine. It was from my favorite toilet. You owe me $6. Oh. And you've got excellent taste. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make dramatic announcements. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm wasting everyone's time. Mmm. <coughs> oh, I don't know. I'm fine. got tired of reading. <laughs> you gotta read. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn, to love, to learn to love. Sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? Uh, that's a fucking Pokemon reference if I've ever heard one. Yeah. I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. Uh. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. Big Daddy Grizz, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. The fuck? Chocolate milk, grilled cheese, tomato soup, and dessert. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down and a tartlet for dessert. Why is it so small? She masters in tiny foods. Oh. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food. But it's just what you need for motivation. You know what? 
I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Sportsing. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn turn on the timer. <laughs> timer ready. Just then, a huge red blood. A huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Roll. I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My bestie can beat the best of them. Best believe it. Hmm. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure. And now, my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can impress him once again, Coleslaw. Biscuits. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Okay, okay. What temperature did water boil at? Winner gets the rub. My very belly. Let that entice. Enticing offer motivates you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know the Colonel Sanders recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices? Eleven. We knew that one. <coughs> but at least you're heading in the right direction. So the wagon intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Trust. Oh, yep, that probably was gratitude. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. Wrong time for dog jokes. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you. But I ain't Isha. It's simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you're going to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never to forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Great harness. Um, Damn it. It goes so fucking fast, how are you supposed to read it? <laughs> Next question. It goes too fucking fast, I can't read it. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. Sound of success. Oh, so Silence. Is that right? Okay, good. Imitate your cooking. You'll be taken with that and you'll be unable to speak. No, you no. notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eyes. I believe in you, Big Daddy Grizz. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now that you can think about the Colonel Sanders, how many spoonfuls of gravy? Oh, Jesus, that was What like the way, fuck? That was way too fast. This is bullshit. Get back into the competition. I think it's doing it fast on purpose. You're stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Sorry, I forgot the question. I don't know what she said, but I'm glad you picked I just something. fucking picked one. <laughs> I'm glad you picked something. Baked biscuits, okay. Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. The next station over. Actually, it's already begun. 
plating everything on her dish. Colorful and complex. <gasps> to make time up, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mix into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. <gasps> Yikes! A fucking robot? I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle. But sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Big Daddy Grizz does. And a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue the dough before it's over mixed. <laughs> Big Daddy Grizz, no! no! no your hands. But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Damn it! Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. I broke my hand. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look around you. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I was with a competitive, a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compete, compare the two on account of Big Daddy Grizz's injury. You see, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. It's a boob. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights. Taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Big Daddy Grizz to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. <laughs> Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. A book? A book? No. What's well, honeycomb? Uh, like a macaroni. Well, disgusting. Inside, you find delicate fried cheese concrete atop a slice of honeycomb ice cream two ways tender nougat and pearls of blueberry jelly yeah. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce hmm. simplicity isn't your strong suit is it Ashley As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce ticks, sticks. sticks to his mustache. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. Okay. And they fall off your face, which means people 
will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. This is so stupid. <laughs> Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy, fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. Beautiful weather feels like an, an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and they have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. <laughs> you try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. And I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. A failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've ever failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in col culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful. Motivated. Full of himself. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life. But I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. <laughs> I resolved th then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money could deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changed focus, you could see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be step can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! <laughs> Fucking kid. Just as your moment grew intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. Gorko, the Spork Monster, is here to fight a hero. Is anyone else feeling a bit of deja vu? I'm sorry, Gorko, but I could have sworn we already battled you last night. That was Gorko, my twin, and I, Gorko, am here to avenge them. Are you stronger than Borko? Well, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. <laughs> Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He is ready. Already on the same page as you. It's just that we beat Borko pretty easily. So I don't think you have much of a chance. Not to mention I feel really guilty about that. If I could take it back, I would. 
I think that Big Daddy Grizz, I think what Big Daddy Grizz is saying is, can't we just be friends? Life's too short to make enemies. I suppose. We really don't need to fight. It's just that I've got these pointy teeth and claws. All the better for enjoying tasty food. Surely you like to eat, don't we all? Of course I do. Inspiration strikes and you come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this! You toss a biscuit into Corco's open mouth and he devours it in one gulp. Why do you carry all these biscuits? Delicious! You're such a nice... You're much nicer than the evil student who, once upon a time, turned me into this creature who stands here today. <coughs> I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a chihuahua. But I was still a student at the school. Until the fucking Taco Bell dog. Yep. <laughs> Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. You know, Taco Bell. A magic spell book. Precisely. Porco used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and you shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocents. The innocent from those who would cheat their... through sorcery and... Guile? 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 G-U-I-L-E? Guile? Guile? Oh, whatever. Fucking French words. <laughs> if you need me, don't fear. I will be there. You have a friend now. It sounds like there's some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Big Daddy Grizz, together I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Hideaway. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. Fucking chicken. <laughs> look at, look at, that's fucking great. And the fucking picture of him as a baby with a goatee and glasses. That's hilarious. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you've lived such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made a decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on a new recipe of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with other ambitious chef, with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close, Coleslaw. <laughs> Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy, both perhaps. Everything. Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him? Or keep it a secret just for you? You decided that you were as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. A present to you. My original coleslaw. You told it. The 
shredded cabbage dish, dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders. Look, Hideaway. He's gonna steal it from you. Magnificent. Together, you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in your bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire the taste later and think back on this moment. He's gonna, steal He's gonna fucking steal it from me. You could offer to make it more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a minute. Might still you realize that now would be the per perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on the item to discover more about oh. the Colonel. Do it. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting in the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy. Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot read, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. <laughs> oh, that's great. So let's go with... Yeah. Hair. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in co color. It's actually made of spun silver. What? Scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? What? Summer of 69? <laughs> no, it's the one with the secret recipe. Uh, no, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... Sperm. Oh, that opened up. Okay, so let's check everything else. He's at the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Ha! Just then the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I can just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out in the breeze. It's a colonel. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ooh, future. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. He knows. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be che cheersing them. You look closely at it, and there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of those secret herbs and spices. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor from the goatee and mustache combo he sports. You figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. The friend's a baby picture of just himself. Probably the same type of person 
who would make their own face the logo of a company they founded. Close look a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but then you wipe it off and you read the inscription. It says, Here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. This must be where he keeps his secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe pops, the safe opens. Inside it, you sign to find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging with him. You take one off the hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. Oh, Jesus. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they mean? Before you can look any further, you hear the Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Ah! I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. <laughs> oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. tried to make my move. Apparently it's not that kind of game. Uh, <laughs> Are you fucking oh, you kidding me? What happened? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm so sorry I didn't mean to intrude. Just a little cold and thought this would warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots closer to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're going to cook. I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Big Daddy Grizz? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. More of that. Was there a chicken riding a chicken? Yeah. <laughs>